I got a lot of requests for this video about how to make a flat color. So there are some tips you have to follow to achieve this color with quality. And I will explain you all in this video. But the most important thing that I want to show you here is that the shoulder line is going continuously and finish here together with the color. We don't have that like the color standing as if it was a Chinese color. To achieve that, you need to transfer the shoulder seam to the front. For simple kurtis, we have the shoulder seam here in the, in the border of the shoulder because the patterns, it has the same armhole length, right? But when you transfer the shoulder seam to the front, then the shoulder adjusts better to your body and then you can have this kind of fitting for this kind of collar. Like the collar, it will fit perfect to your neck and your shoulders. Otherwise, if you don't transfer this seam, the collar will stand. I have my shoulder seam here. It's about one and a half centimeters from the border of the shoulder. I have it here and that means the shoulder seam has been transferred to the front. Now how to transfer that seam to the front? Let me explain you. Here I have the top pieces I got for this video. I got one piece in folded fabric for the front and one piece in folded fabric for the back. These are basic patterns, so the neckline, it will be close fitted to my neck. I don't have any neckline depth here. That I will trace it later in the fabric. But I wanted to cut it like this first to show you how it works. I will remove my patterns. What I want to show you about these patterns is, this is my front pattern and this is my back pattern. Mm -hmm. If I put them together, matching the armhole line here, you can notice the length I have from the shoulder to the armhole line in both patterns is different. The back pattern is longer. My front shoulder finish here and is shorter than the back shoulder. That means when I stitch my garment Obviously, the armpit corners, I'll, I will stitch them together. And once I close the shoulders, since the shoulder in the back pattern is longer, the final garment will be like this. And as you can see here, the shoulder seam is already transferred to the front using these patterns. So if you want to know how to make these patterns, um, check my channel and that will be the last video I upload just before this one. Or also check the description box below this video and the comment section because I will leave the link there. Here I have the back piece for my top and this is the front piece. The first thing you need to do is measure from this point, from your shoulder bone to this point, the point where you want the collar to start and that measurement mark it here in the shoulder of your top in the front. For me it's three inch and a half. Now you have to measure from the base of your neck until this point here also where the neckline will start and that measurement I will mark one inch mark it here in this line also in the front I am medium size and my neck is 15 inch so if you want to use the same measurements than me you can do it now use your French curve to trace the front neckline like this and if you remember I cut these pieces with seam allowance, so I already have seam allowance in the shoulder and also in the armhole. 
So those I will leave it like that and I am cutting here the neckline considering one centimeter extra for seam allowance. Now in the back piece you are going to mark the same measurement you mark in the front shoulder and here if you remember we have one centimeter also for seam allowance. I will mark it here for reference. Now trace a curve like this without considering the seam allowance in the central line like this and cut the back neckline in this way there I have seam allowance also one centimeter in both necklines now here mark one centimeter and a half and from that point downwards in the vertical mark 10 centimeters and from here to here, trace a line slightly curved or straight if you want and cut by that line. And this is for the neckline opening in the front. Now open the front piece and put a piece of paper under it. Mark these three points. And here on the sides mark two centimeters then join the first three points we marked and make the lines longer in the top now here I'm going to mark also two centimeters on the sides of these lines and now trace this side and the other side in the same way. Here in the bottom part close it with an horizontal line and then trace one centimeter seam allowance in both sides and cut your piece. This is for the facing of the neckline. like this. Now here leave enough space to consider also one centimeter for seam allowance and cut one single layer of fabric with this pattern. Remove the pattern. This is the wrong side of my top, the front piece, and I'm going to put these two corners together matching the v-shapes Secure it with pins and then trace this line half centimeter, five millimeters away from the edge and you have to sew from here. When you reach the bottom corner, keep your needle inside. Then turn your fabric to the other side and continue stitching like this. Now I'm going to cut here like this and then I will turn the facing piece to the right side of my top and I will iron it flat. Then also fold the seam allowance and press it and secure it with pins, also in the bottom part. Give a stitch on the border of the facing piece, one millimeter from the edge, in this way. And now from the wrong side, we are going to cut the extra fabric here and here. And now this is ready, you can stitch the shoulders of your top facing right sides of the fabric and once you have something like this, mark the central point of the back neckline, take it from there, in this side take the two plackets together like this and we are going to fold our piece in this way, fold it well by the central line and put a piece of paper under it. 
Now the front piece we are going to pin it to keep it there on its place and the back piece rotated in this way making a fold in the shoulder. We want to form a curve here with our necklines. It's like a U-shape curve. Just copy the, the curve I am showing you here. And now pin also the back neckline to the paper and mark the line following the border of your necklines. Remove the pins and if you remember, here I have one centimeter for seam allowance, so that centimeter I will mark it here, and that will be the original line of my neckline without seam allowance. This line here I will ignore it because it was only for reference to trace the original one. Now I'm going to use my French curve to trace this line, and this will be the base of my collar. Now mark two centimeters all along this line and here I am marking the width of my collar. You can mark two centimeters or as much as you want. Trace it with the French curve. Close it here and also here and be sure this angle is exactly 90 degrees. This will be the front part of your collar and this is the back part. In the front part, in the top, make it rounded, this corner, and then cut it. This is your pattern for the collar. And here in the back part, I am going to make this mark so I will know this side I have to cut it in folded fabric. Now fold your fabric into layers and again fold it to get four layers and here I have a double fold. In that fold, press it so well and be sure all the layers are together in that fold. And then the back part, put it there in the double fold side and cut the collar considering one centimeter for seam allowance. Then in this part, in the back, in the folded side, I'm going to make these two marks to mark the central line of my collar and there you have two pieces of it put them together facing right sides of the fabric and stitch by the inner line starting after one centimeter and a half from the border from here then start here after one centimeter and a half stitch all this inner line and in this side Finish also one centimeter and a half before to reach the edge. This part you have to leave it open. Don't pull the fabric so much. Just let the machine pull the fabric itself. Then open the collar and turn it to the right side and press it well now here I have the wrong side of my top piece match the center point of the back with the center point of the neckline we marked before put them together and put a pin there now you are going to stitch this layer of the collar with this side of the neckline and then from the center this side of the collar with this side of the neckline. I am considering here one centimeter for allowance and previously I pressed the shoulder seams open as you can see there. In that way the collar will stitch better. This is one side. And now from the center to the other side. Since it's opposite curves, you have to stitch slowly and put the two fabrics together part by part as I am showing you here, then you will not have any problem. Or you can pin everything since the beginning also. 
Now this is the right side of my top. I will take the collar and I will fold it to the right side, keeping the seams inside like this. Then fold the seam allowance of the collar, covering the previous seam I did in this way and pin it. Also here in the extreme of the collar, you have to fold the seam allowance inside and pin it like this. Then we are going to give a stitch in the border of the collar, one millimeter from the edge. First a stitch from one placket to the center in the back and then from another placket and finish in the center here. Now optional, you can also give a stitch in the border of the collar here, also at one millimeter from the edge. This is to keep it flat, but as I told you, this step is optional. If you are using interface, then probably you will not need it. And there you have your flat collar ready. If you like this tutorial, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click in the bell button to get a notification every time I upload a new video. Check the description box below this video for more information about this tutorial and also there you will find my networks in case you want to contact me there. Happy stitches for everyone and I will see you the next time.